Hello everybody, this is Tech Hut. In this video, what I'm going to be doing is showing you the just now released Zorin OS 16 Lite. And this is it right here. I've actually been using it for a couple of days on this older ThinkPad to kind of test it out. And so far it's been fantastic. So what we're going to be doing in this video is going over some of the new features compared to the 15th version. Uh, just kind of do a general system run through. I actually did some very light benchmarking against the core or the non-light version just to see some of the general performance differences. Uh, ultimately, the main difference between the light and the core or the pro version is that the light version is going to be using XFCE as the desktop environment, while the other versions are going to be using a very modified version of GNOME. I will also note here that they have a light pro version which will give you a couple extra layouts that you could go ahead and choose from, a lot of pre-installed applications. Probably the most important is the support directly from the Zorin team, or if you want to just support the project, you could go ahead and purchase that. And if you've already purchased the Zorin Pro 16th version, you won't need to buy the Lite Pro, you could just go ahead and download it. Now with that, this is my system right here, and the one thing that you're gonna notice right away is it this doesn't look like XFCE. They actually did a really good job matching this light version to look almost exactly like it does with the regular core version. You can see it looks incredibly similar all the way down to them having the Zorn appearance here. If I go ahead and open it up, we have two different layouts to pick from, or we could go with the Pro to get more. The free version will come with this standard layout that you see here with this uh, icon taskbar, or we could go with the classic style here just to click and it will go ahead and shift over to that. All right, so we are in Zorin Pro here, and instead of just talking about it, I figured I'd boot into it and show you some of the things that makes the Pro version unique. Uh, one thing, you can see I'm in OBS right now, and this is a live uh, disk image or a live environment off the USB, and it already has all the software pre-included, and I'm actually recording directly to a uh, uh, home network server, so it's really nice all the different applications that come with the Pro version. Definitely a lot more. I'm not going to run through every single specific application that is uh, included in addition to, but you can see we have like Ardor, Audacity, OBS, uh, Caden Live by default. A lot of the applications that I use are pre-installed. Again, you could just go ahead and install any of these applications yourself. The big thing, other than the uh, support you get from Zorn, is their layouts. So these are the two layouts that are included in the free version. You have this uh, kind of Windows Classic, or you could go to their default, which I honestly really like the default. And then we have this layout that's going to give us that bottom dock with the top bar. It's a little laggy, again, because this is running off of a USB, but you'll have magnificent performance if you go ahead and install this on hardware. If I hit click on this, it will bring up this, and this looks a lot like the GNOME application menu, but again, we are running XFCE right now. Uh, if I go over here, this is going to bring up that Chrome OS-like layout, and again, we have that uh, application launcher if we click over here, but it brings our favorited icons on the bottom. And if we go over here, we have this layout, and I think this is the GNOME 2-like. I'm not 100% sure, but if you do like this layout, you could go ahead and use it. And then last but not least, we have this uh, another Windows Classic kind of layout that we could go ahead and use here. Personally, I prefer either the Mac OS X like, which is this one, and you do get that top bar here, and some of the applications, not all of them, will integrate with a, uh, a global menu. And I really just do like the default, so I'd probably end up sticking with this, but again, the uh, Mac OS X like is really, or the uh, Chrome OS X like theme is really nice as well. And then of course, we can make it dark to look a little bit better. And then we have the switcher, depending on the time of day, if you'd like. But yeah, that's some of the things in addition to the extra applications that you're going to be getting on the uh, Pro version if you decide to go with this. Or if you've already purchased the uh, regular 16 Pro version, you could go ahead and download this if you would like to. And one thing I wanted to point out too real quick is I really like how they do the sound menus and all that. It actually includes the option to go ahead and select what devices you're using. So that's just to add a little perk. You have media player control rhythm box right here, which is now the new default. Um, yeah, uh, when I first booted into this, I actually had to uh, make sure, I don't think I have NeoFetch. I had to make sure that this was uh, actually not GNOME at first because it I couldn't tell right off the bat that this was a XFCE. So if I open this up here, you can see the DE is in fact XFCE. Uh, we're running Bash. This is running the 5.11 kernel. This is an Ubuntu-based operating system. And of course, we have a lot of the uh, XFCE files. 
and this operating system uses a lot of flat pack, which we'll be getting into in just a sec. Let's go ahead, let's go with the uh, dark theme here. We go ahead and change our accent color. Good. So let's go over to desktop. You have some options there and we have fonts. So you could change all that if you'd like to. And then you can see how well that integrated with that dark theme on this XFCE desktop. Let's go ahead and pop open into our desktop settings. It comes with a lot of really nice wallpapers. I know this isn't the most important thing in the world, but they do have a really nice selection over here. I do personally prefer the default mountain, but you could go over with something like this, a snowy, I think this is Utah, the snowy Utah desert. Ah, I, I could very well be wrong. Just some other things they added, like down here in this bottom bar, if I highlight, you can actually get window previews on this desktop. And just like with the core version of 16 that was released, they're going to have some of their uh, additions, such as their sound recorder. Uh, if you go ahead and try to install an EXE file for Windows, it's going to, uh, one, it's going to try to redirect you to a free and open source alternative that is available in their software center or it's going to help you try to install it with Wine, whatever you prefer. Uh, speaking of their software center, this is it right here. Up here at source, you're going to have all the different options. Uh, you, for some reason, this one, the default was Snap Store. Most of the defaults seem to be flat packs, at least uh, Caden Live and OBS defaulted to the flat packs. But we have a lot of different options here to pick where we want to go ahead and get this installation from. So you can see I go source flat hub hit install and it's going to go ahead and install from Flathub. Now, of course, when you go ahead and first boot up your system, you're going to have the getting started tour. So if I go start tour, it's just going to go over some basic things, how to launch your applications, an option to quickly jump into the Zorn appearance menu, and then launch software options and uh, information on actually learning how to install apps. Let's actually see where that takes us real quick. So install apps on the Zorn page. Okay, so it's just a little tutorial that goes over what all the different file formats are, what the difference between Windows apps, games, uh, different repositories. So a really nice resource, especially if you're uh, not, not quite too sure what is going on. So that's it, and you close it. Now, a lot of the changes between Zorn OS 15 and 16 have come to this light version. So if you're looking for a lot more specific details, I do recommend you check out my initial video on that. Now, being that this is the light version, the primary reason you might want to use this over the core is just to not hog up as much system resources. So what I did is some very light benchmarking, and the very first thing I did was just a side-by-side -side boot speed test. I did this on this old, well not old, but I did this on this uh, moderately aged uh, ThinkPad T450, and the, for the boot speed it was very close, this is on an SSD so it's going to be, but the light still did have a slight advantage. Doing something like the side-by-side -side GIMP render test using the uh, Lava Render, uh, it was very close, the uh, core version actually had a slight advantage. But what really matters is the resource consumption. So what I did was first I checked the RAM utilization of both systems before I went ahead and started opening things upon boot. And we saw Zorn Light sitting right about 650 megabytes of RAM, while the Zorn Core version was sitting in the lower 900 megabyte range. And then what I did was I went ahead and opened up Firefox and that saw Zorn Lite bump up to about 1.1 gigabytes while Zorn Core bumped all the way up to right about 1.5 gigabytes. And then we went ahead, opened up a couple more tabs, loaded up a 1080p video, and then Zorn Lite saw a range in between 1.5 and 1.6 gigabytes while we had Zorn Core sitting right above 1.7 gigabytes. And I will note in the footage here, Zorin Light did have an extra tab open, but even with that extra tab open, we can see Zorin Light is still slightly behind uh, the core version. Other than that, I am really impressed with this out of all of the uh, XFCE desktops that I've seen. This is the most impressive when it comes to what they've actually given you. With just the overall aesthetic, those layout switchers, accent colors within XFCE, I don't think I've seen any other distributions actually do it to this extent. But if you do have examples to prove me wrong, please let me know down below. I would love to check out those distributions as well. So with that, I probably am going to end up keeping Zorin Light on this uh, ThinkPad T450 for quite some time until I want to go in and test something else out. I produced this video, did all the editing, recording, and everything on this laptop or running Zorin Light. So overall, I'm having a pretty good experience. With all that, I'd love to thank our YouTube members and Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. I'm currently working on graphics and all that, and so all that will be up and updated soon.
Download links to everything I mentioned will be down below, like always. And with all of that, I hope you have an absolutely magnificent day, and goodbye.